Okay, something that all NM economists find difficult is to understand why MI is twice as steep as they are. The reason this is difficult to understand is because it requires mathematical knowledge, calculus to be specific. So I'm going to tell you two ways you can understand this. One which is quite basic, one which is slightly more complex. But both will get you to the right answer. Alright, first of all let's start off with basic knowledge of total revenue. So we know that total revenue is just the price of a good or service times the amount sold of it. Okay? We also know that average revenue is the price. Okay? And the price can also give us a demand function of this form. Okay? A linear demand function of that form. A range of quantities at given price levels. So we worked that out from a previous video. And we also know that marginal revenue is just the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. So how much does Revenue change, total revenue change when we change quantity. That's what marginal revenue tells us. Now, let's use these values to give us an actual equation to, to work with. So, let's sub in our price value here. So, this equation here, our demand equation here, let's sub it into this value of P at the top. So, that's going to give us A minus BQ times by Q. We're just sub it in for P up here. When we multiply that out, we're just going to be left with AQ minus BQ squared. That's another way of writing total revenue. Okay, substituting for P here, which is this demand equation. Now, another way to work out marginal revenue, if you don't have figures to use, if you just got equations to use, we would have to differentiate. Okay, and what we differentiate here is total revenue with respect to quantity. So work out the change of total revenue with respect to quantity. A very simple differentiation equation here. So what do we differentiate? We differentiate that equation there. Okay, so differentiate that equation with respect to Q will give us this. Okay, so A minus 2BQ. Now look carefully. This is our marginal revenue equation, which is what we're left with. It tells us marginal revenue. And this is our average revenue. Okay, it tells us the line of average revenue. Now we know average revenue just takes the form of a very simple demand curve. But look at the slope. So we know that that is the gradient. That um, letter there, the coefficient of Q, tells us the gradient of the line. All right, minus B for average revenue. But marginal revenue, it's minus 2B. So twice as steep as the average revenue curve. Okay, so that's one understanding of why the MR curve is twice as steep as they are, using calculus to work it out. Let's look at one other way, which is slightly more complex. Yeah, and it requires the use of the product rule in mathematics. So again, we're going to start with basic knowledge of what is total revenue. So we know total revenue is just P. I'm going to write as a function of Q now. It's always a function of Q. Okay, P is very much dependent on Q, and the two are linked together. Okay, so the price as a function of quantity times quantity. But we also know that marginal revenue as I've just said, is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. Now, we can actually write that slightly differently using the product rule. Okay? Again, without figures, this is no good. We actually need to, to work out how we can actually differentiate an equation to work this out. Well, using the product rule, we can get to a different understanding from the previous example. So I'm not going to go through the product rule, but it essentially gives us this. Okay? The plus is where the product rule comes in. So price is a function of quantity. Uh, plus the change in price as a function of quantity over the change in quantity times by the quantity. Okay, that's a very basic product rule expansion when we have to uh, expand um, the differential that we've got there. Okay, so that's what it gives us. Now let's break down price as a function of quantity. What is that? Well, we know what that is. Okay, we derived and we looked at it when we did our revenue video. Price as a function of quantity is very simply a demand curve. That takes this linear form. Okay, very simple linear equation which explains how our demand curves look. As far as to draw a demand curve, we will have price up there, we will have quantity down there. Oops. Okay, we'll have a very simple down sloping demand curve as normal. Now, the B in this linear equation, or in this case the minus B, tells us the gradient of the line. But what is the gradient of the line? or the slope of the line. The slope of the line just tells us okay, what happens to variables as they change. 
So as we change, as we move along the line, what change do we see in variables? Okay, so the slope here tells us the change in price over the change in quantity. Then the two variables we have, price and quantity. So as we move along the line, the rate of change of price and quantity as we move along, that's what the slope tells us. Okay, so the change in price over the change in quantity. So in truth, we can sub in for B. So instead of writing B all the time, we can sub in change in price over change in quantity. Okay, it enables us to do that. So anytime we've written change in price over change in quantity, remember that's always as a function of Q. Anytime we've written that, we can assign it on B value, more specifically on minus B value because it's an inverse relationship between the two. So let's do that. Let's go back to our marginal revenue curve and let's sub in the fact that we know that this is B. So going back to our marginal revenue, we now have okay, price as a function of quantity in that state, minus B, it has to be minus because it's, uh, it, there's an inverse relationship, a downward sloping line. So we know it's minus B times Q. Right, but we know more than that, we also know what this value is here. P as a function of Q is that. Let's sub that in. Okay, so it gives us marginal revenue which is equal to A minus BQ minus BQ. Okay, let's just collect like terms, which will then give us A minus 2BQ. Okay? So just like we saw before previously, when we have our average revenue curve, look at the slope of the line, it's just minus b, whereas now for our marginal revenue curve, it's minus 2b. So again, it shows a slope which is twice as steep as the AR curve. Okay, that's very useful for a firm to know, um, because if a firm knows its demand curve, okay, it can then just simply work out um, what is twice as steep. You could simply just double the gradient of that line to work out its marginal revenue curve. And that's important for a firm because we know profit maxing occurs when the marginal cost cuts the marginal revenue curve. Right? But if you don't know your marginal revenue curve, you're in trouble. So the firm knows its demand curve, it can then also work out its marginal revenue curve, but it's making the line twice as steep. Okay? Perfect knowledge for a firm. Okay? And that's why we draw it like that. So when we draw our revenue curves for imperfect, uh, competition, we always draw marginal revenue to be twice as steep for that very reason. Okay? So that's the mathematical understanding of why MR is twice as steep as there. It's useful to know that. I think it's good to know that. Um, it's important to understand everything behind this, otherwise you'll have some gaps in the knowledge. Hope that makes sense. Thank you very much.